at least they fixed Cletus's hair? Venom, Let There Be Cuddles continues the story where the former ended with Brock talking to Cletus Cassidy. For no reason worth mentioning, Cletus wants to talk with Brock. With knowledge of Brock, he shouldn't have, but still does like social media when they tell you they aren't spying on you. Then, after making like Trent Reznor, Cletus becomes Carnage. Cletus then breaks out, finds his girlfriend, who will positively cause no issues between Cletus and Carnage, while the bromance between Brock and Venom is pushed to the limit. And all of this despite the previous film solidifying their relationship. Oh joy. Well, for starters, the CGI is a bit better here. Gone are the scenes of Venom and Riot glitching together like a CG artist with a cold sneezed onto the screen. Another bright side is the action has been slowed down a bit with wider angles, so now you don't have shit flashing past your eyes like a subliminal message. And of course, the banter between Brock and Venom is as enjoyable as ever. Oh, and if you're a big comic book fan, stay for the mid credit scene. You'll appreciate that. Now this is where my positives end, and it's all downhill from here. Firstly, Brock, like most of the cast, is dumber than Tyrion in the second half of Game of Thrones. He's brought in to talk with Cletus and is shown a bunch of drawings by Venom because Brock has the observational awareness of a cross-eyed bat. After getting back home, Venom reminds Brock of the images and must show him what the images are, not once, not twice, but four times? He even draws them out like John Madden going over replays. How was Brock a renowned investigator when he's dumber than half a Congress? The scene connection is immediate. How how did he miss this? And there is an awkward retcon to the story. At the end of the prior film, Brock and Venom holding a thug say, We are Venom. Then they proceed to chow down on him like Lizzo at a hibachi grill. In this one, for some reason, Brock and Venom no longer see eye to eye, and they bicker like a couple with marriage issues, because Brock, all of a sudden, doesn't want Venom to eat bad guys. This is just as forced as the retconning of the family growth from The Incredibles to its sequel. This brings me to the main attraction of the film. I sure hope you aren't a fan of Carnage. This film is PG-13 and only because of swearing. So if you're hoping to see Carnage make a mess of people like playing baseball with a bowl of lasagna, that ain't happening. In fact, Carnage is so restrained here, the worst thing you see him do on screen is French kissing a security guard to death. Otherwise, he just kind of pokes everyone to death like a serial tickler. And their perfect symbiotic relationship from the comics is obliterated here, because how else will Brock and Venom win if they don't retread old ground? I mean, this film didn't set up Shriek for nothing. Here, let the writers explain. We decided this woman who could kill with her voice didn't need a mask during an arm transport. How else could the audience have known Shriek could, well, Shriek? Like the Dragonborn stubbed his toe. Or, or, and follow me here, you write a better scene for this setup. Oh, use brain cells? Who do you think we are? Six-figure paid professional story writers? We aren't going to waste our time putting in an effort for a fandom we only want to milk money out of like a money printer that goes burr. <laughs> idiot. And this isn't mentioning that other character motivations compound tonal inconsistencies. For instance, Anne is really passive-aggressive showing Brock she's now engaged, but it feels like she's trying to get him to fight for her while also defending the choice to say yes. He makes me feel safe. The dude got thrown in a trunk by a woman half his size, and I'm Venom. Choosing Dan over me is like running from a serial killer and grabbing a banana instead of the revolver. Ultimately, Venom 2 has a few slight improvements, but is an overall major downgrade from the first, like having a second child to make up for the first. The film looks better, but people are morons. The fight against Carnage is pretty underwhelming, and frankly, the film needed a ground-up rebuild. Let me put it like this, Venom 2 is like getting into a pileup you don't think was that bad. You're ready to thank Volvo for the safety features until you realize Dale Earnhardt is helping you out of the car. Now, thanks for watching. Please like, share, ring the bell for notifications, and if you want to watch more movie reviews, subscribe and watch me rain on Dear Evan Hansen's parade at the link over there, and I'll see you in the next video.